Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel, Gardening in Cold Spring Harbor. Welcome back to my home. Welcome back to Long Island, New York, Zone 7A. Depending on which state, country, or gardening zone you live, I know that many of us have already started sowing our crops from seeds. I have already started sowing some of my cold loving crops inside, indoors under the grow lights and seed starting trays in my green room and i've also started winter sowing some seeds over here right in this jug in my back yard garden for those of you who live in colder climates colder gardening zones who haven't yet got a chance to start sowing our crops from seeds i know that you're already thinking planning, making a list of all the crops that you want to sow and grow this year, which is exactly why I wanted to make this video for you guys, my fellow home gardeners. And in today's video, we're going to talk about all the possible reasons why our seeds might have very low germination or no germination rate at all. I know how frustrating it can be guys to spend all the money on seeds on seed starting supplies to put all the effort and energy into growing our crops from seed only to come find out that our seeds have either sprouted very very little or haven't sprouted at all and by knowing the reasons why our seeds have been acting very, very naughty on us. And most of the time, it's just a trial error, human error, which can be very, very easily corrected. So in today's video, I'm going to cover all the possible reasons why we get little to no germination rate when sowing our crops from seeds. So for, the, for those of you looking for that online gardening channel that offers tips, tricks, easy yet proven gardening advice to take your home garden to that next level don't go anywhere guys stick around with me today stop by going below this video and clicking the subscribe button if you are enjoying the content of my gardening videos if you find my garden videos to be useful helpful informative in any way don't forget to click the bell icon as well youtube will send you notifications every single time i upload a new garden video now let's get gardening in this in this video we're going to talk about how you my fellow home gardeners can increase your germination rate and germination success i know that sowing from seed seed starting is very very tricky especially for you guys beginner home gardeners there are so many questions you guys have so many insecurities so many fears I know that many of you read gardening books, watch gardening videos, gardening tutorials, only to end up walking away still feeling scared, unsure. So many questions that you wanted answered, yet they were still not answered for you. I know how scary, how frustrating that can be. Makes many of you just, just, you know, just walk away from this whole gardening process. Just say, you know, forget it. This is just too complicated, too tricky, too scary. But seed starting is also so rewarding, guys, to know that you started with one tiny little seed. You had the control of the entire process. You know exactly what seed starting mix you used, what fertilizer you used, whether it was organic or not. You know when you transplanted your seedlings. You know what gardening soil you use when transplanting. You know what you sprayed or didn't spray on your plants. Only to come to harvest you beautiful, delicious, healthy, organic crops. How rewarding is that at the very, very end? So now, before we get into any detail, I want you guys to join me here and grab any seed packet that you might have laying in your home and I know that us home gardeners have such large extensive seed collections we keep adding and adding more beautiful crops to our collections so let's start off by grabbing a seed packet and in a second I'll tell you it doesn't matter what crop a seed packet let's turn our seed packet around because the back of the seed packet contains all the important and detailed information that all of us 
home gardeners need. There is a reason why seed companies type and place all this information on the back of the seed packet to help us home gardeners to have maximal germination and growing success of that particular crop. So what can you find on the back? You find grow guide. It tells you clearly how many seeds to place, what location to grow in, planting depth, the spacing, how many days to germination, how many days from seed to harvest, and what will be the mature fruit size. Also gives you a map of the United States and shows you for your gardening zone approximately when to start those seeds outside, which brings me to my first possible germination mistake or the reason why our seeds are not germinating at the rate we want them to germinate is planting depth. Every seed packet, regardless of the brand of the company, will have the seed depth. What is seed depth? That is how deep we should be planting or sowing that particular seed. And each seed, each crop will have a different planting depth. So what is the rule of thumb? The rule of thumb, you should plant that seed twice the size of the seed's diameter or twice the size of that seed. So now many of you might ask me right now, what does she mean by size? Do I hold the seed this way, this way, this way? How do I measure the sizing? Should I get a ruler out? Should I get a measuring tape out? How do I measure this? Don't worry about it, guys. A trick I learned over the years is to use the, the nail of our pinky finger. So I always plant my seed as deep as the sizing of the fingernail on my pinky. And that usually always does the trick. Why should we never plant or sow our seeds too deep? Imagine the sizing of those seeds, guys. They would need so much energy. They would need to do so much work to push through that seed starting mix to sprout and to grow. So the deeper we sow them, the more energy they're going to need and the smaller the seeds. Imagine how tiny your onion seeds are. Imagine how tiny your carrot seeds are. So the deeper we plant them, they won't have that energy to sprout and to grow. I know how frustrated we home gardeners can get when we see vague gardening advice, such as don't overwater the soil. Keep our soil warm. Don't make it too damp. What do all those terms mean? Too damp, too warm. I, as a home gardener, always like to go by numbers, by facts by easy yet proven gardening advice, which is why in today's video, I'm going to give you specific information, specific numbers, specific gardening facts to make the seed sowing process rewarding and easy for you guys, my fellow home gardeners. So what is that next possible error that us home gardeners make when sowing seeds that will lead to low to no germination rate? Always check the date on your seed packet. Absolutely every seed packet will have an expiration date. It might be on the bottom, it might be on top, it might be on the side, but there's always an expiration date. Many of us have a stash, a collection, a vault of seeds that we have in our home garden. Whether we purchased it two years ago, one year ago, five years ago, Maybe we found a great after season sale. We just got excited and purchased all these seed packets. Guys, as years go by, the germination rate on our seeds will decrease and will decrease significantly, especially the first year or two. When we start out with a fresh new seed packet, I know that many seed packets say germination rate 100%. That can never be the case, guys. Nothing in life is ever 100%. On a new seed packet, the germination rate is typically between 95 to 98%. The first year. As the years go by, it decreases by about 25% every single year. 
So if you start off with 100% germination rate, by next year alone, you're already down to 75. Then you're down to 50%. So you should always, always check that expiration date on the back of the seed packet. If you are seeing very low to no germination rate and you're, you sowed 10, 20, 30, 40 seeds, and you might be wondering, what am I doing wrong? What is happening? Go back to that seed packet. Take a look at that expiration date. Maybe that expiration date alone will answer that question for you. So what is that next possible cause of low to no germination rate when it comes to sowing our crops from seeds? That is moisture. So I know that the topic of moisture is a very great topic. That is that topic that brings up most questions from many home gardeners. What is moist enough? What is too much moisture? So now, if our seeds will not get water will not get moisture they will not germinate period zero germination however if they receive too much moisture they will end up rotting in that seed starting mix before they even sprout so what is that perfect amount of moisture is when you're touching that seed starting mix and you feel wetness however when you're squeezing it, there's no water dripping out of it. If you are seeing any water drip off onto your hands or onto a surface, that is too much moisture. If you are touching with your finger and you're not feeling moisture or you're seeing that the color is light. So our seed starting mix, when it's not wet, will change pigmentation will change coloring from this darker brown to this lighter brown. So that color change is also a great indication that your soil, your seed starting mix might need more moisture. You never wanna feel anything dripping, any water running off. That is the sign that you are absolutely over watering your seeds. Soil temperature is our next topic of conversation. It's very important to know what crops you're sowing and growing from seed and what temperatures do those crops prefer to germinate in and to grow in. So whether you're growing cold loving weather crops or warm weather loving crops. So what are some of our warm weather loving crops? Zucchini, okra, tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, Cucumbers, any and all of those are warm weather loving crops. So that soil temperature has to be on the warm to hot side in order for them to successfully germinate and to start growing for you. To even get to mature seedlings, you need that correct soil temperature. So what is that warm soil temperature? At above 55 degrees Fahrenheit. So what is that hot soil temperature? 75 degrees Fahrenheit and above. Ideal soil temperature for maximal germination on any crop is between 75 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, some of you might say that is just too hot for cool weather loving crops such as our beets. Our cilantro, yes, that is too much for them, but they will still germinate. There's not a single crop that will not germinate when placed under such warm, hot temperatures. However, ideal germination temperatures for cool, loving weather crop is between 45 to 55 degrees Fahrenheit. So even temperatures as low as 45 degrees Fahrenheit will help your cool weather loving crops germinate and to grow for you. So now, I'm gonna ask you, are heat mats, are seed starting heat mats, are they useful, are they beneficial? Should you even buy one? Yes, guys, they are beneficial in the long run, very beneficial, especially if 
you cannot control or adjust temperature in the room in which you're starting and growing your seeds. However, you must be very, very careful when using a heat mat. Many seed starting heat mats do not come with that sensor, with that valve, which will shut off that heat mat automatically when a certain temperature is reached. Hence, if you leave your seed starting to directly on that heat mat, sometimes that heat mat will heat up to temperatures 100 degrees Fahrenheit and above, which is way, way too hot, which is not good either. So when using a heat mat, you should always monitor the temperature and know when to shut it off so you don't lose your seedlings from overheating them too much as well. But yes, seed starting heat mats are very, very useful and absolutely very helpful when used appropriately and correctly. So make sure you do monitor the temperature, especially if you know that your seed starting heat mat will not have that control, that self shut off function. So what is that next tip that I want to share with you guys? That is to always look on the back of the seed packet at germination days, days to germination. For example, this green globe artichoke says 10 to 20 days till germination. So say you planted your seeds and it's only been two, three days and you're starting to panic which I know many of us home gardeners do. We just start to get frantic, panic, thinking we did something wrong. No, guys. If the seed packet clearly states, say, seven to 10 days to germination, and it's only been two, you guys can relax. The seeds are smart. They know exactly what they're doing in that seed starting mix. And when the timing is right, they will germinate for you. So the next thing you must always consider is, is it a wet season or a dry season? Certain crops will not even germinate if you try to start them during the wrong season. For example, beans and even corn. Farmers do not even attempt to grow beans or corn during the wet season. An example of wet season is spring. That season is too wet for crops like beans and corn. Why? Because these seeds are susceptible to fungus, to bacteria, to even to rotting if sown during the wet season. This is why the farmers start these crops later on, warmer, dry summer seasons. So before you start sowing certain crops, make sure that you are aware what season that crop prefers, whether it's wet season or a dry season. Another thing you must consider, always consider, are condition requirements. So what conditions do our crops require? So the season, whether it's wet or dry season, that was one condition. Another growing condition you must always consider, do that, does that crop need shade? or maximal bright full direct sunlight. I know that many crops out there thrive, prefer, flourish in full bright sun conditions. However, not our carrots, especially not during their germination phase. They prefer shade, as much shade as possible in order to germinate and to grow, which is why many of us gardeners, home gardeners, even farmers, always cover our carrot seedlings with either a wooden board, a cardboard, some sort of a tarp, anything that will create that shaded environment. And once we see those seedlings start to sprout, that is when we remove that shaded cover. So always consider those conditions that the crop you're planting requires. Because if you don't provide those conditions, guess what guys, do not expect that crop to germinate, especially crops like carrots. So if you do not cover those seeds up with some sort of a board or a cardboard, you can wait and wait and wait only to come to find very low, actually probably no germination whatsoever. Which brings me to my next topic. 
and that is special needs. So not all seeds are made equal. Some crops do require that bit of extra love and extra care. So what are some examples of those special needs? Let me show you. So that first special need or special requirement is called scarification. So what is scarification? It's a process where you take your seed. Great example of the seeds that do benefit from scarification are our artichoke as well as asparagus seeds. So now, what is scarification? I'm going to open this packet right in front of you guys and show you what artichoke seeds look like. So you could see that they are larger, very tough seeds that have this coating on them, this gray beige coating on them. So now, what is scarification? Scarification is the process where you take a 200 to 250 grit sandpaper and you gently scratch the surface of your seed, your artichoke seed or your asparagus seed. I'm not telling you guys to destroy the entire seed, to go nuts on it, to rip it to shreds. No, gently. Just give it a little nicks. Nick here, nick there. Why? Because by scratching the top surface of your seed, you are allowing more moisture, better moisture absorption into that seed. So seeds like artichoke seed and asparagus seed are the top seeds that benefit from the scarification process because that will allow them to absorb more moisture, better quantities, and will help them germinate and grow better. So what is the next special needs method that some seeds require? That is called stratification, cold stratification method. In a few words, let me tell you what that is. That is the process where we mimic cold winter seasons to help our seeds germinate and grow better. So what seeds benefit from this cold stratification process? Most cases, perennials, such as our lavender, even strawberries. So our perennials drop seeds, typically in the late fall, and then go through that cold winter period. And they know that that is the timing when they sleep, when they rest, only to come to wake up and grow for us again. So now, how do we put our seeds through this cold stratification process? You take a paper towel or a tissue and you moisten, you dampen it with water, tap water. So what do I mean by damping it? You water it enough that it's wet, moist. However, you do not want to squeeze it and have all that water and moisture run off. That means you over it. So you want it to be wet, but you do not want to see any liquid moisture water running down. Then you place your seeds, your perennial seeds, inside that damp, moistened paper towel and you put it in a fridge. For how long, you might ask? up to three weeks. I wouldn't do anything less than three weeks. Then after three weeks are up, mark it somewhere on the calendar, on your note, on a sticky pad, in your phone. Remind yourself that after three weeks, you need to pull those seeds out and plant them. After they go through that cold process of three weeks in the fridge and you pull them out back into room temperature, those seeds are going to wake up. That's going to be like an alarm clock for them. It's going to tell them, you know, ding, ding, ding. It's time to wake up. It's time to grow again. Just like us humans. Sometimes when we don't have an alarm, what do we do? We oversleep. We keep sleeping, keep sleeping and keep sleeping. And we miss out on important events in life. So if you don't give that alarm clock, that reminder to our seeds, they will not germinate. They just will keep sleeping on. So that stratification process does wonders for so many seeds and so many crops. This is it for this video, you guys. Thank you so much for joining me here in my home, in my home garden. 
and in my green room in Long Island, New York, Zone 7A. In today's video, we covered all the possible causes of low to no germination rate when starting our crops from seeds. If you found today's video to be helpful, useful, informative in absolutely any way, show me that support by clicking thumbs up below. Leave your comments in the comment section as well, guys. I love communicating with each and every single one of you. Let me know, have you started sowing your crops from seeds just yet? If so, have you ever experienced low to lack of germination? And if that was the case, do you know what contributed to that low to lack of germination rate? Share with me, guys, pictures of your beautiful seed starting trays. I love communicating with each and every single one of you. For those of you who haven't yet subscribed to my garden channel, Garden Cold Spring Harbor, what are you waiting for, guys? Super easy for you to do, super pleasing and rewarding to me. It's very, very simple, guys. Just go below this video and click the subscribe button. For those of you who are enjoying the content of my garden videos, you find my garden videos to be useful, helpful, and informative. Don't forget to click the bell icon as well. YouTube will send you notifications every single time I'll upload a new garden be healthy happy be well each and every single one of you and happy gardening guys and i'll see you again in my upcoming garden videos bye guys